today on the Tearsheet Podcast. Winning the U.S. market is, you know, a core to the success of, of our business, and and I think that's being reflected in, you know, the the investments we're we're making uh, from a marketing perspective. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you'll have seen um, uh, where uh, we're launching a Super Bowl ad this year. Um, you know, that's a that's a um, a, a super exciting thing for any um, uh, company to do. It almost feels like a coming of age thing for, for wow. Kana, uh here in here in the US. You know, it's, it's obviously a significant investment, but you know, I, I think the timing's right. You know, I think if we'd done this two years ago when we didn't have the consumer traction, we didn't have the retail traction, uh, it probably wouldn't have been as successful. I think now, in combination with you know the, the partnerships with the Macy's, the Sephora's, the the Etsy's, the, the Ralph Lauren, I think it's a I think it's a really exciting time for us. And I think you'll see when you uh, when you see the commercial, you know, it's not just about, you know, uh, a new payment solution. It really is about a, uh, a new, cool, different way to shop. And, um, uh, you know, we're really excited about it. Welcome to the Tearsheet Podcast. I'm Tearsheet Editor-in-Chief, Zach Miller. Klarna is such an interesting company as part of our coverage universe. As one of the major buy now, pay later companies, the firm is gearing up to IPO after hitting 15 million customers in the U.S., more than doubling over a year ago. But the company's vision is way broader. Today's guest is Klarna's David Sykes, the firm's president of North America. Pay attention to how David describes Klarna's positioning as a financial services firm supporting its customers' shopping experiences. That definitely flows through to banking and payments, but also to shipping and returns. I think Klarna wants to be the bank of shopping. David Sykes is my guest today on the Tearsheet Podcast. Before we hop into our conversation, I wanted to tell you about Tearsheet's Acquire Conference 2021. It's all about the growth behind today's top financial brands. If you want to hear what top brands in the industry are doing to grow, to scale, to market, you're going to want to attend Tearsheet's Acquire Conference. We've got brands like Marcus by Goldman, Current, Step, Zelle, Shopify, it reads like really like a who's who, Money Lion, Charles Schwab, PayPal, Square, N26, Vero Money, Stash, Cabbage, Tally. If you want to hear what these firms are doing and how they're approaching growth in this era, you're going to want to attend the conference. The conference is sponsored by Burgo Pack. It's February 16th and 18th. For more information, you go to tearsheet.co, our website, and click on conferences in the upper right-hand corner. Hope to see you there. Uh, My name is uh, David Sykes, and I'm the president of uh, of Klarna uh, North America. Uh, So I lead our our US, uh, U.S. business. So can can we be specific about what Klarna's U.S. business is? Yeah, of course. So um, uh, we uh, we have two components to our business. Uh, one is uh, a B2B component where we work with uh, retailers like Macy's, Sephora, Ralph Lauren, uh, and we give their customers the opportunity to uh, effectively split payments up over time. So you go to the checkout um, uh, um, on Macy's, uh, just as you can choose to pay with PayPal, choose to pay with Visa card, uh, you can choose to pay with Klarna, um, and we're going to let you break that purchase up into four interest-free installments. So almost a uh, reverse take on on layaway. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have another component to our business, which is a, a sort of a direct-to-consumer uh, component uh, where consumers can download our app, uh, and it has a whole heap of different functionalities that just improve the shopping experience. So they can wish list items, they can uh, earn loyalty points, uh, they can track packages. Um, set price drop notifications, uh, and importantly, they can uh, you know uh, use the client app to shop anywhere and break any purchase into four interest-free installments. Uh, so they're the they're the components of the U.S. business. Great, and I, I guess I have a, a structural question. As as Klarna expands um, its footprint, in particularly in the U.S., do you see more and more usage on the consumer side? People going directly to you guys for shopping. We we do that. That part of the business is growing. Uh, extremely quickly. Uh, so, you know, on any given day, we see about 30 to 50,000 uh, consumers downloading our app. We're, we're actually adding about 1 million consumers a, a month at the moment. And I think um, I think it's a nice sort of like flywheel effect where um, because we're adding more large retailers, so you think about, you know, adding a Macy's, adding an Etsy, adding a Sephora, we're actually on the product page of every every Macy's uh, website. So every every product uh, on Macy's, you're going to see, um, you know, the Klarna logo. Every product on Etsy, you're going to see the Klarna logo. So it becomes a much more visible um, brand and solution with these uh, really large retail partnerships, and that in turn drives more consumer adoption. So, you know, the 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 basic, you know, user experience is a, a customer will typically discover us on Macy's. 
um, they will uh, enjoy that experience. They'll enjoy the flexibility that comes with, you know, purchasing with, with Klarna. We'll encourage them to download our app uh, and then they'll use that app to, you know, as I said earlier, shop anywhere. That, that's, that's, uh, that's typically how it goes. I guess does the flywheel effect also then enable you to, for that new marginal merchant that's not necessarily on working with Klarna, does it enable you then to have more leverage in that relationship and say, hey, listen, we've got all these consumers using our app? It's the it's the biggest sort of evolution of the business, right? Mm. So if you think about uh, you think about when we were first pitching, you know, early early in our you know um, uh, life cycle in the US, we were really talking about you know increasing conversion and increasing you know average order value. So best way of thinking about that was a uh, hundred people turn up to a website. Um, on average, seven or eight of those shoppers are going to put something into a basket, but really only one or two um, shoppers are actually going to make a transaction. So early on when we were, you know, um, selling Klarna to a retailer is about how do we take two shoppers out of 100 to, you know, 2.2 or 2.4? How do we increase conversion by 10 or 20%? Um, now the conversation is a little bit different. Uh, the conversation with the retailer is, you know, we have now 15 million consumers uh, here in the US. We're adding a million consumers a month and they're engaged. You know, we have about three and a half million monthly active users of our app in the, in the US alone. So now the conversation with a with a partner or a retailer is how can we reach into our network of um, of shoppers, um, work with you to create a really targeted, really relevant, you know, very attractive, you know, promotion offer, whatever it is, and how do I drive you a, a whole new customer? So how do I take uh, two in a hundred to three in a hundred? And so for a lot of our partners now, after Facebook and Google, we're the number one source of net new customers. So you know, it's a really exciting sort of. Uh, evolution of the business as as the as the community grows. Wow, and and do your do your merchants view you as um, like from a customer acquisition cost point of view? Like, are you are you compared similarly? It's it's starting to head that way, right? So if you mm. think about you know uh, a year ago, 18, 18 months ago, most of our conversations with a, with a large partner or with the you know the payments people, and you know we were really bucketed into you know that that uh, payment payment mix. So you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, comparing us with a with a PayPal or comparing us with a you know a traditional credit card, um, uh, these days we're just as likely to speak to the you know the, the marketing teams of these businesses, right? Because if you think about it, um, these same brands are paying affiliate marketing um, fees of anywhere between five and fifteen percent. You know the the cost of acquiring a customer on um, uh, on Facebook or on Google could be anywhere between fifty and one hundred dollars, right? So. Um, in that context, um, Klarna as a, a source of new customers is actually extremely competitive. And, and that's what we try and do. We really do try and drive customers to our, to our retail part. That makes a lot of sense. And, and so what are the costs for merchant in terms of reaching a new customer via Klarna? It's a percentage it's, of the sale or? It, it's a percentage of the sale, but to, okay. to be honest, it, it's only nominally higher than their existing, you know, payment mix. So, you know, that's just, I mean. just just making up, you know, round numbers. If If you're a small merchant and you're paying, you know, uh, um, a payment service provider 2.9% today for for offering um, you know the ability to just process any payment. Uh, mm -hmm. Adding Klarna might only be you know one or two percent more expensive, um, but obviously you get a tremendous uplift not just in you know the the natural AOV lift and average order value lift and conversion lift that happens when you give your customers more flexible payment options. That that's going to happen and that in of itself you know enormously valuable for a partner. And then you also have this new customer uh, adoption component, which is uh, which is increasingly exciting for, for partners. One of the things that um, has been interesting to me to watch um, Klarna really expand globally is, it, in in a way, it feels to me, and I, I'm curious to know if if you see it the same way that, like, installment lending or point of sale lending or whatever you want to call it, buy now pay later, in a way has moved. And you said this first, David, actually, like from being a, a lending product to a payments product, like you're embedded in the, in the, in the shopping cart. Do you, do you see that similarly? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, this year, for example, we're going to uh, launch uh, pay now. So, you know, no extended payment terms. It literally just gives a consumer the ability to, to pay immediately with Klarna. Um, and, and the reason for that is uh, increasingly we see um, consumers uh, choosing us in, in all of our markets, but, but we're already seeing it in the U S they're not necessarily doing it because they want to pay over time. They're doing it because, um, you know, it's for, for actually for a whole heap of the same reasons that consumers first, you know, flocked to uh, PayPal. You know, it feels more secure. Um, it's much quicker than pulling out a, you know, a debit or credit card and entering a 16-digit um, uh, card number in a, in a new 
uh, checkout form. Um, and they're also doing it because they want to track their packages and they want to be able to see a SKU level image of the item they just bought and they want to be able to, you know, register for a price drop notification. So, you know, I do think it's evolved from being a, you know, about uh, extending payment terms or being a budgeting solution for, for, for consumers to, it's actually just the preferred way of, of many consumers to shop. And we see that in, you know, the, the repeat purchasing rate. That's a very interesting uh, evolution of the business to, to buy now. So how does that position Klarna then as a global company, does that, does that change the way you think of who you compete against? Um, does it change the way you position or market yourself? Yeah, I, I think, I, I think it has changed. So um, the, the best way to describe, like to describe how I think we differ from, from other, other providers in market, it's really about our ambition. And our ambition isn't to just be a payments company. You know, I, I like to sort of describe it as we want to sit at the intersection of payments and shop, shopping and increasingly banking. And we really want to make all of those activities, you know, better or, or more, more consumer friendly, right? So, you know, when we think about it, our the, the customers that we serve, you know, they don't think about it as, you know, discovery and then delight and then transaction and then post-transaction, you know, that they don't break up shopping into those components. So we want to build an experience that really makes all of those things, um, you know, we, we use the term smoother, smoother for, for a customer. And, you know, that's making it easier to, you know, discover, you know, promotions. It's uh, making it easier to, you know, engage with your favorite brands. It's obviously making it easier to, to actually make a transaction, but then it's also making it easier to return a product you know, uh, post-transaction. It's making it easier to track that package post-transaction. You know, we, we really try to, you know, make shopping better. Um, it, it's just a different ambition from, from a lot of the pure players of payment, payment providers. <clears throat> Pardon me. That, that makes a lot of sense. So, I, and I guess, can we talk about how Vibe, um, the loyalty program fits into that? Yeah, of course. So if you think about the overwhelming number of consumers, particularly in a market like the US that are using our product, you know, they're um, overwhelmingly uh, a younger audience um, and they're using debit cards. So, you know, 85% of the consumers who are, you know, paying with, with Klarna on any given day are linking a debit card to, uh, to, to Klarna. And that's really the big demographic change that's sort of uh, driving, you know, the, the growth of solutions like ours. It's the fact that young people in particular are just shopping differently. You know, they're more likely to use contactless payments. Um, they're more likely to shop online and they're also uh, much more likely to shop with a debit card, you know, debit card. And, and they're averse to taking on more debt, right? It, exactly. You know, they yeah. just haven't embraced traditional credit products, you know, at the same sort of propensity as, as um, uh, older generation. And one of the, one of the, the, the you know, the, the corollaries of, of that change is the fact that th these, these consumers actually don't benefit from a lot of the, you know, the, the, the points and reward systems that, you know, uh, you would typically. Because uh, of um, debit. Exactly right. So what we're trying to do is make sure that these consumers aren't penalized because uh, because they're using a debit card. Uh, and obviously, we want to create a reward for them or an incentive for them to continue to use to use to use Klarna. But it's also about, you know, taking some of those um, those rewards that are, you know, more typically uh, the, 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 the historical province of, you know, premium credit cards and, and making them available to consumers who, who, who shop with Klarna. So basically, um, as you earn uh, um, uh, or as you shop with Klarna and you earn uh, vibe points, um, you know, a whole heap of different things become, you know, available to you. So, you know, uh, it might be that you get um, uh, gift cards to your favorite, you know, um, retailers, for example, it might be that you're um, able to get access to exclusive deals and drops, you know, a lot of those things that you would you would typically see with a premium, uh, premium branded credit card, we're trying to make that available to, to debit card users who, who use our product. Well, and I guess it's even more than just, you um increasing frequency of Klarna, it's, it, it actually is one of the inputs, I guess, to the flywheel that you were describing earlier, right? A hundred percent, right? Like what we're trying to, the way we think about it is, you know, increasingly, if you're a shopper and you go to a checkout, you're going to see a whole heap of options. You're going to see pay with PayPal, but you're also going to see pay with, you know, uh, Alipay, you're going to see pay with Samsung Pay, you're going to see pay with mm -hmm. Apple Pay, Chase Pay, whatever it might be, right? Um, and you're going to see other providers who, you know, do some of the similar payment services that we do. Um, for us, it's about all about consumer preference. Why, when a customer gets to that checkout, do they click Klarna? And for, for us, you know, if you think about, you know, ability to pay in four interest free installments, that, that's just a feature. You know, it's a it's a compelling feature for, for, for a certain consumer, but it's just a feature. So we, we want to create a whole heap of really compelling reasons why a consumer consistently chooses Klarna as their preferred, um, preferred payment method. And over time, you know, uh, preferred shopping method more broadly through the app and you know the the vibe program having you know um uh, uh you know really um 
um, compelling rewards is a, is a, is a really important component of that. That makes a lot of sense. And I, and I, I think I, that maybe that distinction of moving from a payment app or an installment payments app to becoming the preferred like shopping um, experience, I think is, is maybe underappreciated about where you guys are headed with Klarna. And I appreciate you uh, describing that here. Um, we, had, we ran an article earlier this week about um, citizens uh, who has been in point of sale lending for since 2016, rebranding citizens pay. Um, do, do you see more banks, given the excitement around Klarna's business and I guess some of the IPOs of your competitors and stuff like that, do you, do you, do you see more banks actually moving in as competition? Yeah, look, there's no question that um, uh, a lot of traditional financial institutions will start to offer you know, as I said, these are features. They're, they're going to start to to offer these types of features, right? And and I think that's going to be driven by, you know, the same um, the same sort of consumer sentiments that's you know in large part propelling our business, which is uh, young people wanting to shop differently, right? So you already see, um, you know, uh, some of the credit card companies. You know, American Express, for example, will now allow you to um, break a purchase up into installments post transaction. Um, you know, you can go to Amazon today uh, if you're a, a if you have a Citibank credit card and you can you know pay in installments on your credit card. So we, we do think, you know, the the act of breaking something up into installments we think is probably going to become ubiquitous. You know, it's almost being commoditized, um, and that's why it's really you know what are you doing other than you know break, breaking something up into four interest rate installments? You know, you know how, how are you providing value to a consumer over and above that you know that simple act? And you know I think that's where um, you know, maybe we're a little bit ahead of the game, or we hope we're a little bit ahead of the game. But we we definitely see you know the, the bigger um, financial institutions you know moving into this space. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I guess maybe we can shift the conversation to looking ahead for you and, and Klarna. Um, where are you guys headed with the business? It sounds like obviously the, you know things are firing on, on a lot of cylinders. The growth is is sounds really strong. Like, what are the next steps for you guys? Yeah, look, I think I, I, I still think we're pretty pretty keen on, on growing like crazy, right? Like we've mm -hmm. been uh, really fortunate, you know, this year to to grow um, extremely um, quickly, and um, and I think you know we're really focused on you know expanding our, our, our retail partnerships. Um, we're very very focused on continuing to you know improve the, the product offering um, to consumers from a shopping perspective. That's that's core for us right now. Adding more. Uh, adding Kleiner at more checkouts, um, expanding the, the sort of like the ecosystem for, for shoppers. You know, ubiquity is really important for uh, for, for payment solutions, um, and then making sure that that shopping app um, uh, is as compelling as possible. You know, adding features that just uh, uh, not just work, you know, really really well, but are, but are super relevant for, for our shoppers. Hey, and then you know, lo longer term, who knows, right? Like if you look at um if you look at Kleiner in in, in Europe. Uh, you know, we, we issue, you know, more traditional style credit cards. Uh, we uh, are a deposit taking uh, institution. Um, and so I think, you know, that there's an opportunity, you know, nothing planned yet, but there's an opportunity over time um, to start to overlay some some, some other products to, to consumers, maybe some more traditional banking products, um, you know, similar to what you see from, from some of the neo banks um, uh, in, in Europe and in the US. Is there an interest to bank the merchants as well? Yeah, good, good question. Um, not, not at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's probably, you know, it's that's probably a, um, an area that that's, you know, relatively well served, particularly for, for larger merchants. You mm -hmm. know, I, I do think, you know, um, uh, there where, where, I, where I think there are, you know, potential opportunities, you know, longer term, um, you know, I think that SMB space is, is probably a potential opportunity for, for long term, you know, extending the types of products that we do for consumers to contractors, for example, or, you know, um, you know, there's definitely um, uh, an opportunity, I think, to, you know, extend um, uh, smaller SMB uh, pay, uh, um, um, players, you know, um, uh, uh, cash flow advantages, you know, you, 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 you process their payments, you've got a really good sense of, you know, um, uh, uh, um, you know, the revenue of that business, mm -hmm. you know, can you use that data to, you know, uh, more cost effectively I provide some some you know cash flow you know management mm -hmm. to to small SMBs. So I think there's a lot. There, there, there's no shortage of opportunity, right? Uh, what what I what I know is that for, for a company like ours, you know, focus is your is your most important asset, really. So it's about you know how do you spend your time, given that there are just so many opportunities right now. Where we're pretty laser focused on improving that that shopping experience for customers and and building that retail network out. Awesome. And before I let you go, David, I I, I want to deconstruct a little bit about 
uh, your marketing and, and, and what's propelling this growth? You talked about demographics being in your favor and things like that. Is there, is there something you put your finger on to say, like, this is how, this is what's actually, you know, driving this, this massive growth in the U S yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I, I think, I think everybody is riding a wave at the moment. And what, what mm-hmm. I mean by that is that there is this um, uh, overarching just change in how consumers shop. And, you know, the buy now, pay later movement is getting a lot of prominence, but the, the, the changing nature of how consumers shop is, is broader than that. You know, like I said, you know, the growth of contactless payments, uh, the growth of online, uh, the growth of mobile payments, um, you know, all of these things are just uh, ways in which consumers are changing their shopping expectations, changing their shopping behavior, right? And that's propelling, you know, a whole heap of businesses, you know, ours, in, uh, ours included. I think that the difference between us and, you know, a lot of other providers in, in marketing, one of the things that I, you know, immediately liked most about Klarna is I really do believe we're trying to, you know, build a consumer focused brand that is very, very different from the tr- traditional financial institutions. You know, uh, we, we joke internally that there must have been like a Mad Men episode that said, you know, blue is the color of trust because, you know, every single financial institution almost in the world is blue. So That's certainly great. in America, right? And, you know, uh-huh. we, we made this bold decision to be pink. You know, we made uh, the decision to, 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 to be carbon neutral before anybody else. You know, we really wanted to build a brand that resonated with, with a, you know, a different type of shopper, a younger shopper, a more socially conscious shopper. And in part, it's because, you know, we felt that they were very skeptical of the traditional financial institutions. So when you think about, you know, Kleiner from a marketing perspective, you know, it is really, really different, you know. Um, and if you look at the the campaigns that we've uh, that we've run, whether it was you know our first campaign in um, in market with Snoop Dogg, whether it was the campaign with uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, whether it was um, you know the, the the female empowerment campaign we ran with Lady Gaga, like these were non traditional campaigns for you know we're we're a regulated bank in Sweden, right? And I think it speaks to you know um, our aspirations as a brand, you know how we want to connect with a with a, with a different type of consumer and I really do think that's why yes there is this you know, wave that everybody's riding but I think one of the reasons why you know we're fortunate to grow faster than some of the other providers in market even though we're all in a similar space I think it's because of the the energy and the effort that we've put into that brand component and connecting you know in a more genuine way with the consumer and you know I think that's something we'll continue to do. So given what you said about um, your marketing and the growth in the U.S. and the focus are, are you making big investments here? Yeah, absolutely. Like it is uh, one winning the U.S. market is you know a quarter of the success of, of our business, and and I think that's being reflected in you know the the investments we're we're making uh, from a marketing perspective. So uh, you know uh, you, you'll have seen um, uh, where uh, we're launching a Super Bowl ad this year. Um, you know that's a that's a um, a, a super exciting thing for any um, uh, company to do. It almost feels like a coming of age thing for for wow. Kana, uh, here in here in the U.S. You know it's, it's obviously a significant investment, but you know, I, I think the timing's right. You know, I think if we'd done this two years ago when we didn't have the consumer traction, we didn't have the retail traction, uh, it probably wouldn't have been as successful. I think now in combination with, you know, the, the partnerships with the Macy's, the Sephora's, the, the Etsy's, the, the Ralph Lauren, I think it's a, I think it's a really exciting time for us. And I think you'll see when you, uh, when you see the commercial, you know, it, it's not just about, you know, uh, a new payment solution. It really is about a, a new, cool, different way to shop. And, um, uh, you know, we're really excited about it. David, thanks for joining us on the Tearsheet Podcast today. Uh, Hey, thanks so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it.